I said something was amazing, of course. Good evening, uh, Secretary Pompeo, uh, dear Mike. Uh, welcome back to the NATO headquarters. And uh, thank you so much for uh, coming here just hours after your trip to uh, Turkey. And thank you for uh, briefing the North Atlantic uh, Council. We discussed uh, the situation in uh, Northeast uh, uh, Syria and the joint uh, statement. And I welcome that uh, uh, two NATO allies, the United States and uh, Turkey, have agreed on a way forward. We all uh, know and understand that the situation in Northeast Syria is uh, fragile, uh, difficult, but I uh, believe that uh, this uh, statement can help uh, to de-escalate the situation and uh, therefore help uh, to improve the situation on the, the ground. Um, NATO is an important forum for all NATO allies to sit together and address uh, uh, common security concerns and the situation in North East Syria is uh, a concern uh, for all NATO allies and it matters for all NATO allies. Um, I visited uh, Turkey uh, on uh, Friday uh, and I stated that uh, Turkey is on the uh, front line, the forefront of a very volatile uh, region. No other ally has uh, suffered more terrorist attacks. Uh, they host uh, millions of refugees. Uh, and Turkey has legitimate security concerns. At the same time, I stated my deep concern for uh, the danger of uh, escalating the situation, uh, for uh, more human uh, suffering, and uh, also for uh, increased uh, migrant and refugee uh, flows. Um, we will, uh, uh, we all understand that we have a common enemy, Daesh, we have made enormous progress in the global coalition, all NATO allies and NATO are part of the global coalition to defeat the Daesh. And we must not jeopardize the gains we had made in the fight against our common enemy, uh, Daesh. We will uh, uh, address this issue when the NATO defense ministers meet later on the, uh, next week. And uh, this just shows how timely and important uh, the briefing we had this evening and the discussion we had this evening. And therefore, once again, thank you, Mike, for coming and uh, meeting the North Atlantic Council. Welcome. Thank you. Jens, thank you. Um, and thanks for joining me on a Friday night. I know this is exactly what everyone expected to do on a Friday night in Brussels. Um, it was important, however, that I come by here. Uh, our, our NATO allies and partners are an important part of America's national security. And I wanted to come talk to them about uh, the conversation that's taken place in the statement that was uh, jointly um, ag agreed to by uh, the United States and our NATO ally, Turkey, yesterday. I wanted to talk to them about what we accomplished, the things that still remained. You talked about uh, the continued challenge to counter ISIS in the region, all the things that still need to be done. We still have a political resolution in Syria under UN Security Council Resolution uh, 2254 that we jointly need. Uh, to uh, work towards a resolution. It was also important for me to be here. You are a great leader of this organization, and it was important for me to stop uh, as I headed out of the region to make sure that uh, our NATO friends and NATO leadership understood what the United States had accomplished, the things that we had achieved, uh, and the path forward uh, to limit the risk associated with the incursion into Syria and to make sure that we can still deliver on all the missions. We also had NATO partners that were on the ground with us there in Syria. Uh, who were working alongside us there. It was important for me to get a chance to talk to them, to thank them uh, for what they had accomplished along the way as well. So that was, that was the mission, the reason I'm here, and I thank you for hosting me here this evening. We have time for just two questions. Jennifer <coughs> Hansler from CNN. Hi, thank you. Uh, Secretary Pompeo, President Trump earlier today in remarks about Syria said that the U.S. has taken control of all the oil, quote, that everybody was worried about. Can you explain where this oil is, how the U.S. is controlling it, especially uh, if troops withdraw, and then uh, is, is this con does this raise concerns about Syria's territorial integrity? And then to both of you, um, what is the understanding of when the ceasefire actually went into effect, and do you believe that it has been violated? So let me take, let me take the, those two questions, uh, and then uh, Secretary Stoltenberg can, can answer to the extent he, he wants to. Uh, look, the ceasefire time period, the pause commenced when we issued the statement yesterday evening, so we're now some, I don't know, 20 four hours into this. Uh, we're very hopeful that we will continue to be able to implement and execute that. We, uh, there, there was some uh, activity today, but we also saw some very positive activity, the beginnings of the coordination that we, will be required. The reason this couldn't happen instantaneously is there was a great deal of coordination that had to take place so that there can, in fact, 
be a safe withdrawal of the uh, YPG fighters uh, that are inside of the Turkish controlled area that is covered by the agreement. Uh, and we're hopeful in the hours ahead uh, that both, both the Turks who uh, were part of the agreement alongside of us, uh, as well as the, uh, the uh, YPG fighters in the region will uh, take seriously the commitments that they made and that we will actually achieve within the next now 96 hours uh, the commitments that were laid out in paragraphs 1 through 13 of the agreement. Um, I didn't see those uh, president's statements today that you suggested. I, I know this. Um, we are driven by UN Security Council Resolution 2254 to make sure that we get the outcomes that the United States and, uh, frankly, uh, most of the member nations uh, at the UN have agreed is the right outcome to get the proper political resolution in broader Syria, not just in the Northeast, but more broadly. Uh, you have to remember, uh, prior to this administration taking office, over half a million people were killed in Syria. Millions and millions of people displaced. All of this um, before President Trump took office. Uh, we see the burden that that's placed on our NATO ally Turkey with now some two or three or four million displaced persons inside of Turkey. That's an enormous burden. Europe needs to provide um, uh, to seriously consider how to respond to this, this threat, uh, this challenge that's presented by migration. We are hopeful that what Vice President Pence achieved uh, yesterday will be the beginning of leading to the resolution of all these greater challenges that are presented throughout Syria and more broadly, uh, the instability that creates throughout the Middle East. I'll just uh, state that the situation in Northeast Syria remains fragile. But it is important that two NATO allies, the United States and Turkey, uh, who have been on the ground for a long time, have agreed a statement, uh, made an agreement on the way forward. That uh, is important because it can provide uh, a basis for progress and for de-escalating uh, the situation. And that's exactly why I also welcome the fact that uh, those two allies have agreed and also uh, the fact that uh, uh, Secretary Pompeo spent some time here with all the NATO allies uh, discussing the way forward uh, in northeast uh, Syria. And NATO plays an important role both as part of the global coalition uh, to defeat Daesh, uh, but also being a forum also to discuss difficult issues also when there are different views within the alliance. And that's exactly what we do uh, when it comes to the situation in uh, northern Syria. Dan Michaels, Wall Street Journal. Secretary, uh, President Trump today spoke about countries taking back foreign fighters. Can you say specifically which countries are taking back and is the U.S. doing anything to facilitate that? And also, since October 6th and the administration's discussions with Syria, with uh, Turkey, um, how do you feel was enough done to prevent the violence in the first place? Thank you. The United States has been working for months on a safe zone mechanism inside of northern Syria. We've committed real resources. So had some of our NATO allies. They were working alongside us on this. Um, I know that in the moment, the moment when uh, President Erdogan called President Trump, he, President Trump made very clear that this was unacceptable, that we were opposed to their incursion, their cross-border uh, activity. Uh, so uh, I, think, I think we made very clear the United States position that we opposed this Turkish incursion into northern Syria, that we didn't think uh, this was the right approach that would yield the very results we were we are cognizant indeed we said in yesterday's statement that turkey has valid security concerns along that border but we didn't think this was the right way to approach it and we took seriously uh america's capacity to try and stop that incursion uh, your first question was about foreign terrorist fighters we've seen comments today from uh, a number of countries who've said they may well be prepared to take back these fighters i, I have to say uh, i'm happy about that I am disappointed that it didn't occur previously. I personally have had this as one of my missions for an extended period of time. We have known this risk. Uh, 10,000 foreign terrorist fighters, uh, many times that uh, detained persons, women and children in camps, both in Iraq and in uh, northeastern Syria uh, that have been detained. These are mostly ISIS fighters and their families and those around them, uh, their release. Uh, presents a real risk to the world. And we have asked every country that has their citizens uh, to take them back to their host country. We have had some success, um, but very little from uh, European countries who were prepared to do that. I hope that they will be now. Uh, the risk remains that these camps um, uh, 
won't continue forever. And I, I hope that they will take seriously what we, we view as their obligation to take these people back to their countries. And to the extent these are uh, people who have violated the law, that they be prosecuted to the full extent of the law in their host country. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to get into details. We're, we're hopeful that every country that has persons detained in these camps will accept those back into their country, not just European countries. There are many, many countries around the world who have had people leave their country and go to fight alongside ISIS in their campaign in Syria. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Great. Thank you Thank for you joining all. us at this late hour.